Okay, so I want to give a little tour of my trip to St. Paisios Monastery in Safford, Arizona. I stayed there for a whole week and um, I hope you can see this picture well. I'm going to go through about 60 or so pictures and um, this is of the outside of the church. Um, there's 22 nuns that live there. They're on 350 acres. They've got three priests also that live on the property. Um, they're pretty much self-sustaining. They have um, pomegranates and olives are their main crop. I don't know if they grow anything else on there. And they've got chickens, uh, guinea hens, and goats. And they make uh, goat cheese. So uh, this is a really beautiful picture in the evening. If I can get these pictures to go. All right, another one at night. Gorgeous picture of the church. And that's the front of it. This is the main church. There's actually two chapels on there as well. But this is the main church. Now, they don't let us take pictures during services or any video of any kind at, at any time. So I don't have any video. don't have any pictures of the, of the actual services. But they let us take pictures um during other times so you will see some pictures of inside this uh, this main church and the other two chapels as well All right this is uh just the grounds there this is inside our little dorm rooms so there was three of us to a room uh, i went with nine other women and this is looking outside of my dorm room there and that's, uh, we're upstairs, and so that's looking downstairs in the hallway. Got a picture of um, Mother Mary and Jesus. And that's down the hallway. <laughs> the mats on the floor are messed up because we just got there after a really long trip. You know, two planes and then a three-hour drive um, from the Phoenix airport. So we rolled our bags down the hallway, and uh, you know, the... the the carpets got messed up. The nuns would go crazy if they saw this mess because they have a thing about orderliness. Um, and then on the, the door there, you can't see, obviously, what it says, but um, that has the schedule, which uh, the services for us started at 5.30 a.m. every day. Um, we were there, I think we were there for seven days of services or at least six days. Um, yeah, six days of services we were there. For they started at, at 5.30, but when we got into the church, um, the nuns had already been there for I don't know how long. I believe they get up at 2 a.m. every day. So they were already chanting when we walked in. So, But that had our schedule. Um, also, there was a couple days where we, we, you know, we left. So we, we started at 5.30, and then I think the service was over about 7 or 7.30. Sometimes we'd come back at 9 for another couple hour services and then go to lunch. Um... But then other times we didn't go back for that nine o'clock service. There was that was when they had a liturgy, which uh, people received con communion uh, during that time. Let's see. That's outside uh, in the pomegranate orchards. There, I helped them too. I got to help them press the pomegranates. They had a little room. Um, they had five little little hand press machines, and uh, so I did that for two days. And we got we pressed a lot of gallons of pomegranate. So they sell the juice, they make jelly out of it, and they make it into vinegar. And I'm sure they do other things with it as well. And and this is some of their machinery and uh, vehicles. It's kind of interesting to see the nuns riding around on their their tractors and things. Because they have to wear their full uh, habit, you know. And also, we uh, visiting there, we had to wear, you'll see a picture of me with like full um, head covering on, neck covered, you know, sleeves down to here, long skirts to the floor. We had to dress like that to, just to stay there. And even to visit, you have to dress like that. So, But I didn't mind it. It really wasn't that hot. Uh, I think one day was hot while we were there, and the rest was pretty mild. Uh, I think these I think these are olives I think they are I didn't get to pick any olives and and that was a that was a big deal there because um, there was gonna be one night that it was gonna freeze and so they pretty much had 
everybody out, uh, I mean, by everybody, I mean all of the nuns were out picking the olives before there was a freeze. Um, they make olive oil, of course, with it, and we got to eat lots of olives and have their olive oil at meals. Um, but and they only let a couple, I think, of, from my group go out and pick. Um, mostly they had us on pomegranate duty, but yeah, I didn't get to go out and, and pick the olives. Um, this is just some of the grounds. Like I said, it was 350 acres there. A lot of a lot of land they have that they own. I th forget how they acquired it. Um, I think it might have been donated to them. Some more. I believe that's all. Of, I don't know. I'm not. I'm unfortunately not a farmer, so I don't. I don't. I'm not quite sure. Um. I think that is gasoline. Can't quite. Yes, I. Yeah, see, unleaded. Yeah, unleaded. All right. So they got a lot of vehicles out there, and they actually have a couple of SUVs too out there because they do need to go into town once in a while. We made a couple of trips into town. We had to had to hit the Walmart to get some uh, some things. Um, it's about a fifteen minute drive from the monastery. Some more farm equipment there. I think, oh, if you look down the road um, uh, there, that I believe is one of the priests' homes. There's three priests that live uh, on the property, but they're, they're far, pretty fair distance from uh, where the nuns um, stay. They call them cells. So it looks like a dormitory from the outside where the, the nuns live, but they call them cells. So I don't know what these cells look like because we weren't allowed to go in there. They're, they're, just to themselves um but this um this is solar paneling on the where the priest lives because i guess one of there's one of the three priests knows how to do solar stuff so he's kind of he's kind of put that up all over the place so which is good let's see this one of the ladies i was with was collecting uh these things once they had died and fallen to the ground so and they turn into like this hardened holy wood. Holy, I mean by holy is like holes in it. So, just some more pictures of the grounds. Uh, big bins of chopped wood. I kind of wondered if we were going to have to be out there chopping wood. I assume the nuns chopped this because they do everything themselves. And I think this might be back where the chickens and goats are. Yeah, we got some. Those chickens are guinea hens. Can't quite tell. That's me. Ugh. <laughs> Quick pick. My my skin was having an issue. So uh. Yeah, but that was me in my full full headgear. All right. And this is back where we I believe this is back where we were pressing the pomegranates. Either that or that's just. Where the barrels of juice are. We were inside a room, so I, I can't I can't tell if that was the room we were in or not. Let's see. Some more pictures of the grounds. A uh, picture of the main church from the road. Same thing. And then on the left here, that is that is where the nuns' um, cells are. This is the entrance to a cemetery they have, and and by the cemetery they have another little chapel there. Uh, this is some more of the grounds that are close to where our dorms were. These pictures are a little out of order because for some reason I couldn't, my computer wouldn't let me put them in any kind of order, so here they are. Uh, oh, and this is in the bookstore. So they have a little bookstore, they sell all kinds of stuff. They sell icons like you see here on the wall. They sell their olive oil, their pomegranate jelly. Um, they sell all kinds of books, incense, um, things like that. I, I, I'll show you what I came home with. I came home with a lot of stuff. But I'm surprised I fit it all in my bag. Um, and you can order from them online as well. Here's some little, uh, what do they call these? Uh, some little Russian dolls because they were used to well I think they used to be under the Serbian jurisdiction this is a Eastern Orthodox uh, monastery 
but I think now they're under the Russian jurisdiction. So they got some Russian things in here. Wow. Some icons, some tapes, or not tapes, what am I saying, CDs. Um, oh, here's the, the pomegranate jelly and the olive oil that they press and some honey too. I don't know if this is their honey. I don't know if they have bees. They might. Uh, let's see. That's the entrance there when you walk in to the bookstore. And this bookstore is actually downstairs from where we're, we are staying, where the women's dorms are. Let's see. Again, that's the entrance of where the little cemetery is. And I have some pictures of that as well. So right here, um, yeah, so these are, you can see these are Orthodox crosses. Um, just various, various Orthodox people are buried out there. These are, in, these are chairs that are inside um, the main church and the various chapels. And I just want to get a picture of these to show you. They're really, uh, in Orthodoxy, we don't sit, we stand, <laughs> but these are kind of all along the sides and the back. So, um, so if you need to, like if you really need to sit down, you can, and they're kind of, I think I have a better picture somewhere in here. I'll show you, they're, they're kind of like, the, the, the seats fold down, um, but they also fold up to where you can sit higher if you like, if you want to, or if you're a taller person, you can sit there. Or you can kind of, I saw a lot of the sisters would um, would stand in these and just kind of lean. And these, these, these were high enough, um, the arms were high enough where you could stand and just kind of lean on them. I did my best to not have to sit down, <laughs> but I did sit down a few times because the, the service is a long and the floor is not very forgiving. It's, it, I don't know what it's made of, but it's like concrete-like. Um, so it's not carpeted, it's not wood, so it doesn't give at all. So even though my feet survived standing for hours, my back did not. It just kind of radiates to your back. Like you, I, I did have to sit down a couple times, but uh, not too many times. Um, and this is a little side chapel. I think this one, yeah, this is the one by the uh, cemetery. It's, it's over here a little bit. Yeah, I think some of my pictures are cut off here. Whoops. There we go. See the whole thing there. All right, yeah, so this is like, this is kind of normal for any chapel or any church. They have the same, um, it's the same setup. You always see Jesus on this side and Mary on this side. And you see John the Baptist over here. And then um, the angel, is that, is that Gabriel? I think that's Gabriel. Um, I can't, I can't read that. Um, and then this here in front would be, um, the icon of whoever the church is dedicated to. And I think in this, I think the, um, the icon that's left of Mary is always going to be, I believe it's always going to be the, wh whatever, um, it's, you know, the church is dedicated to whoever it's dedicated to. So this is probably Gabriel in here as well. And that's the outside of the little church, the little chapel that's um, by the cemetery. And here's some of the graves. So this, so this is how you know it's Orthodox. Just they, they use a different style of cross, you know, so they have, you know, here's the main part of the cross. And then, um, and then you see this is where, you know, the writing was. Um, and then that's where the, where the uh, Jesus' feet would have been. So this is, this is just the orth orthodox style of cross. Let's see. Some more. And some more of the dirt road. Pomegranates. Pomegranate orchards. You can see, I mean, this just went on for what looked like miles. Pomegranates up close. They looked good. They were ripe. And we got to, uh, one, one of the days when we were pressing them, 
it was early in the morning, about 8 o'clock after services, and um, the sister told us, she came around with little cups, uh, and, she, and she handed us each one so we could take a drink of the pomegranate juice. She says, oh, it's time for you to have your vitamin C. So we got to taste it right after we just pressed it, and it was so good. It was so good just right out of the fruit. I mean, it was amazing. Oh, and the other thing, too, um, which is interesting, is uh, when the nuns are doing any kind of work, when you see them like cleaning the rooms or just doing any kind of anything, um, they are saying the Jesus prayer silently, but you know, under their breath, you can hear them, um, which is, you know, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. They say it over and over and over again. And when we were pressing the pomegranates, we were told to do that as well because they didn't they didn't want us talking. Because <laughs> there was five of us in there, in between three and five of us at any one time. And so... Um, they told us that's what they want us to do because this is a workspace and that, and also just for our own benefit we should learn what that's like to do that you know it, um, just to, just to see how that feels and what it does and it, it really it really helps you focus and you just do your work and you just kind of get into, into this prayer and you know it's it's very nice uh, some more of the grounds let's see farm equipment I think what's their motto is excellence, exactitude, and orderliness. Those are the three words they they focus on in everything they do. So uh, I think these are olives. Of course, I don't know. I didn't get to go out to the olive picking. More farm equipment. And this would be where the animals are. I think that's goats laying down for the afternoon. My dog wants to come up here. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> she wants to see the pictures too. So this is where, yeah, this is where the goats were. We had lots of goat cheese that they made. It was it was really good. Um, this I think those are guinea hens laying on their eggs. Some more pictures of the pomegranates. Oh, and this is our, this is just kind of our little kitchen downstairs. This is not, this is not where we ate. There's a separate lunch room. And I, I don't have a picture of that. The only picture I do have uh, has um, the people in it that came with me. And I don't, you know, I don't have their permission to post their picture. So, um, but otherwise there, we, we, I took that picture when we first arrived um, in the evening of a, uh, it was like a Saturday evening. And, there was nobody else in there except the sister who had set the food out for us. And so I kind of snuck a couple of pictures, but otherwise there was no time to get any pictures of that. Um, be, I'll explain later uh, about how lunch went, but this was kind of our downstairs where we had our little kitchen. We can, we can eat down here to have snacks and keep some food in the fridge. Uh, and on, on this side, uh, like our rooms were over here and maybe up here. And then on this side, on um, I think there was a couple novice nuns that were living on that side of the building, but they and so they didn't live with the other main nuns because we were told a couple times we had to be quiet because it was it was quiet after six p.m. and so if we were down here even talking at all, even just kind of softly, they could hear us. And and again, as I said, they they have to get up like at two a.m. You know, we used to get we got up at four thirty in the morning. I thought that was hard enough, but but you know, so they had to really go to sleep. Dinner was over by about 5.30, and we might have a little service until about 6. But after that, they needed to go to sleep. They needed lights out because they had to get up so early. So, And then this, this is the main church. Okay, so this is when you first, well, there's a little part when you first walk in. Um, I think that's called the nave. Is it called the nave? Or is this the nave? Oh, forgive me. I can't think of the nave. Like, there's a, it's a part of the church when you walk in. And then after you walk in, there's the narth narthex, I believe. And the narthex is where I had to stay during the services. Although I got to go walk through there and venerate the icons, but then I had to go stand in the narthex area. I think that main area is called the nave. I forget what the main... The, the entrance is called but anyways um 
So there was a there was a part where <laughs> bless you. There's a part where we can't walk past unless we had permission. So see where the if you look at where the um, the Jesus icon is and where the Mary icon is, we didn't go past that point because the nuns are back there. So you can't see them like during the services. You can hear them chanting, but you can't see them. And um, these doors back here, that's where the priest would be either behind or he'd come out in front of them. Um, but we didn't get to go back there except the first day, the first, the first day that we were there, at, I mean, after the night and we slept and the next morning we went to services, we got a blessing from the abbess. So we had to line up and go, then we got to go back there <laughs> and get a blessing from the abbess. But that was the only time we were allowed back there during services. We can go back there when there were no services going on and we can take pictures and stuff, but, um, yeah, during the services, no. And these saints here, we have St. Luke of Russia and St. Pantelemon, okay? And both of these two saints here were doctors. And I heard a story, I guess, the abbess who decided which saints go here when you first walk in, um, she wanted the first thing you see um, to be healing saints. And you might say, well, why don't we see Jesus first? Well, we saw Jesus <laughs> when we first walk in. Actually, when you first walk in the church, you have a have a uh, icon of Jesus and an icon of Mary. And so then, when but when you come into this main part, you see these two saints, and then you see uh, the uh, oops, oh my Siri is going off. Then you see the Jesus icon and Mary icon. So you go in and. The protocol really is to venerate, go, walk to the Jesus um, icon first and venerate him and then to Mary and then you cross back over and you go to Pantelemon and then to St. Luke. At least that's what I was told. So, But this is beautiful. And this here, this chandelier, um, it, we didn't get to see what it does, but I guess on special occasions they it, it moves, you know, so the inside of it will turn around and the outside will... We'll go back and forth, and it's really pretty, but um, we didn't get to see it do that. And this is is during the daytime, obviously, when the light's coming through from the ceiling. Um, in the morning, when you go in at 5.30, it's dark, and everything is just candle lit, and the nuns are chanting in the back, because um, they've been there already for who knows how long. And it's just really, it's really feels sacred, you know, and, and it's, it's really beautiful and indescribable. It's something you just have to experience to to get that feel for it. It's it's really really something. And then this is one of the side chapels. Okay, so if you going back to this main chapel, on uh, if you back if you back up into the narthex, um, and you take a right or you take a left, there's two little side chapels. And one and the side chapel on the left is where the priest hears confessions and I think on the right as well he may but I'm not sure um, but you can go into those as long as those doors are open during any of the services you can go in there and they have their own icons like this one I believe was on the left hand side uh, chapel so they've got you know um, Jesus and Mary and I don't remember if that is St. Nicholas, if it is, then that would be why they'd have, then this would be like a St. Nicholas icon here. And then, like I said, uh, described like they always have the patron saint on the left of Mary. So um, I don't know if it's St. Nicholas. I don't remember. But, and then this is some holy water there. Um, and this is a close-up close of St. Pantelemon. Close up of the Jesus icon. And this is on the right hand chapel. So, um, is that St. Paisius? Probably. St. Paisius is the main name of the monastery. So, kind of looks like him. Let's see. And these again are another picture of the chair, so you can see. Uh, so you can sit low on them, or you can sit high on them. But but these are these are around um, 
just around the walls of the church. They're not in the middle. So, you know, let me let me go back so you can see how that looks. You see how, okay, so you see how along the side, that's how the chairs are. So they're kind of just along the, the border. And in here, you know, this is where you stand. There's no carpets or anything like that. And I noticed, um, I think I think women are supposed to be on the left side and men on the right side. So either that's how it's supposed to be or that's just how it worked out. Um, there was only a couple men there that I, I heard they're like locals from the town who come in for services. And so they would be standing on the right-hand side. And we were all on the left-hand side, though I was... Um, I was back in the back a little ways, but still it wasn't that bad to, you know, I was concerned before I went there, I emailed the nuns to ask like, well, you know, I'm a catechumen. So I, I read that I can only be in the North X and where does that look like? And where is that? Cause I was concerned I was going to be like somewhere where I couldn't see or hear, but that's not the case at all. You're just basically in the back. That that's it. And which was fine because I had a full view of every, uh, you know, the whole church. So I really didn't mind. Go back ahead. Okay, and here's a close up of that. Um, I don't know if it's called a chandelier. It probably has a special name for it. So this is when we were allowed to walk closer and take pictures. Um, and this is so this is like the priest's doors there where he uh, goes in and out of, and more and more icons of Jesus and uh, Mary and John the Baptist. Let's see, and these are. Uh, both of uh, two Saint Paisius, one one that is um, the patron saint of the monastery, and then one who was named after him, who was a more twentieth century uh, saint who was named after Saint Paisius. And these are some relics in here, in this little box in here. Another close up. It's beautiful. Uh, and this is back behind. So this is where the choir is that we never see. We just hear uh, St. Paisius icon. Um, this is, I believe, the abbess's chair. Either, or she's either to the left or, wait. Yeah, I don't, I think that's, don't think that's where she was sitting. I think she was sitting in this one over here that I didn't get a picture of to the left. So, um, yeah, so when we were allowed to come back here and over to her and get a blessing, so so she's facing she's facing the priest uh, sitting in this chair here. Let's see. Yeah, so this is where, yeah, I think she was sitting over here. So this is this is the front um, of the church. Another picture of the chandelier, or I'm not sure the name. Another picture. <laughs> I took as many pictures as I could because I, you know, I knew I wouldn't get a chance to get back up there in the front, especially during services. So I, while while I had a chance, I tried to take a picture of everything. And this is where the sisters will go when it's time during the services. You know, two or three times we we venerate the icons and so um so even i would get to come out from the narthex and and venerate with everybody else but but we didn't go to this we had um the part that i showed you in the church and but then the nuns would go this is where they would do the venerating so they would go to this jesus icon and um this mary icon etc Uh, oh, this is when you first walk in. It's a little fun. I didn't get a straight on picture because this is, this is, so if you walk in and you turn, look to the right, this is what was on the right. So here's like the Jesus icon. Here's some candles over here. You can take a couple and put them uh, here um, in the sand. And, and usually when you walk in, there's already one lit. So you just light your candle from, from that. And then I don't think I got a picture of the other side, but you know, to the left of the Jesus icon would be the doors where you walk into the church. But be before you do that, you can go to the left and there was a Mary icon and, this, and it had the same setup. You got the candles and then the sand and, and the box to put the candles. And then um, 
on the same side there was also like a donation box where you can either put money in or you can put um, uh, like a, a list of names you would you want them to pray for so and then this which little chapel was this oh I think this was the same chapel this was the um, uh, sorry, that's Gabriel so that would have been um, by out, out by the cemetery more pictures of that and this is a view uh, of the main church there and the nuns uh, cells um, from the area where the cemetery is uh, and down this road so our our dorms were right here on the right and the bookstore is right there and so if we walk down this road there's another little chapel I spent some time. These are these are our dorms there, and and also on the far right is where the novice nuns were. One of their vehicles, and let's see some chairs over where this other little chapel is. Okay, so this chapel is dedicated to Saint Anastasia of Serbia. Because remember, this used to be under the Serbian jurisdiction. It may still be, but I read that it was under the Russian jurisdiction. So, but anyways, this is for um, Saint Anastasia of Serbia. It's her icon, and again, we have the same same setup. You know, the Jesus icon, Mary icon, Saint Anastasia, and then her icon over here to the left of Mary, and then just a bunch of bunch of different icons another one of her and this is the outside of the chapel and this is one of the doggies they have um, guard dogs there and I know I know the dog looks very friendly and she was but they are trained so I wouldn't mess with them she this dog here is actually retired her name's Lily and so she was she was just very gentle but she put in good service for them for however many years and uh, Oh, this is the church, the main church at sunset. And this is the main church. Wait, is that the main church? Yes. Yes, this is the main church again. It was so beautiful. I mean, these pictures don't do it justice. If you were in there, uh, you, you, would, you would see. It's like these pictures just aren't even enough. I don't know if those floors are marble or what. I Somebody... It's, I, it's not it's some word I've never heard before. They're made out of something I've never heard of before. But in any event, they were very hard floors. Very hard floors to be standing on. Let's see. Oh, okay, I don't know if I showed a picture of the in. Yeah, I think I showed a couple pictures of the inside. So this was our room. I'm actually the bed over here. Um, this, so this is my view from my bed. <laughs> and so we have our own little you know, uh, icon corner there. So icon of Jesus. And so you can, we would pray in the morning, we'd get up and do morning prayers or even, you know, evening, evening prayers after, you know, before and after the church services. So plenty, plenty of, um, praying going on here. Uh, the beds were very comfortable. Let's see. And, uh, Lucky for me, I had, well, I had two roommates. I had one that liked to do exercises like me. So I tried to keep up on my exercises while I was there. Uh, and so did she. So that was kind of fun. And then this was, um, this is, these doors head into our uh, meal uh, room hall. I'm not sure what they call it. but um, And this room that we were sitting in here was where we had little classes. So part of this was kind of a religious retreat where a priest came there and we had some classes and um, we went over the Beatitudes so we had several classes on that um, but these doors you know these doors would open and we actually didn't walk in through this way we, we went around another side but but you could if they wanted to open like if they had more people to feed they could open these doors and, and, and the people in here would be part of the main uh, dining hall it's a beautiful picture from outside there's a lot of bees that like to gather around this water fountain. So, but this was so pretty, I thought, with the, the sun ray. Um, more beautiful pictures. Another picture of the church. 
Yeah, so this is the outside of where we ate the meal hall. So this is where we had the little class, classroom that I was just explaining. And then we'd walk down through here to get to our meals. Um, that was interesting. So usually we were going to the meals straight from the church. So what would happen is is that uh, quietly the nuns would, would file out of the church and we would follow them and walk right over to, to here um, to the meal hall. And uh, in a very orderly fashion, we would file into our table, staying quiet the whole time, no talking. Meals were exactly 20 minutes. Um, the meals were set out for us, so they would usually be five or six bowls. Um, to uh, the, the five or six bowls would usually go to four people, and so if there was like 12 of us, there'd be like three sets of that. Um, there was only 10 of us, but I think there was actually a couple other, yeah, there was a, sometimes a couple other people that were not with our group that were there too. So, so yeah, there'd usually be like three sets of these five or six bowls and they'd have a variety of things. And, um, you know, we'd sit down, uh, there, there would there'd be a prayer and then, um, I think there was like a bell and then we would sit down and then we wouldn't start taking the food until, um, I guess the the head nun <laughs> started started to to dish the food to her, you know on her table and then we'd see we'd see the nuns start to to um to dish themselves the food and then we knew we could do it so we would do that and, and while we were eating um we would, actually wouldn't start eating until we saw uh nuns taking a bite first but then um there was a reader that was, was reading from a book uh, during the whole meal. So um, there was no talking other than the reader reading. And then after about five minutes, um, the, I don't know if you call her the head nun. I don't know if it was the abbess who was in there or if it's just like a head nun because I didn't really look over and I don't really know who was who there, but she would, after about five minutes, then she would, you know, ting, ting on the glass and then we could serve the water. So we would eat for a good five minutes before we can even pour the water for ourselves. Um, but the food was really good. I mean, uh, there was a couple days it was vegan because we have in Orthodox we have some fast days, and they're they're not usually strict fast, meaning no food. They're fast like fast from meat, fast from dairy, fast from eggs, things like fast from oil. Um, so there were a couple days like that, but then there was a day that we had tuna, you know, and we and when we did have oil, they would have of course their own pressed olive oil out there on the table, which was really good. And we almost always had their goat cheese out there. Um, and they, they made a lot of eggplant dishes, which were actually really tasty. Um, what else do we have? Can't quite remember, but it was all good and it was filling enough, you know. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that was, well, I didn't get a picture of that. There's an instrument, I don't know what it's called. But it's like a big wood thing where they 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 play on it to you know and it, they sound carry so you know it's meal time. Uh, let's see. And then this is a little cabana between our dorms and the meal hall. Just a sign pointing to the bookstore. Uh, another shot of the beautiful church. Again, inside. <laughs> For a couple of days, I was the first one up, or at least the first one downstairs, because I uh, went down to make coffee. Because, you know, I'd get up at 4.30, we'd have to be at church at 5.30, but you'd be surprised how quickly that hour goes when you're just getting dressed and brushing your teeth, you know? It just kind of goes fast, and then the coffee maker took, you know, a good 15 minutes to make coffee, so by the time you, you know, have a cup, you gotta chug it down and... Um, before you start walking over to the church. So I try, a couple days I try to get down there early and just get it made. So everyone had some coffee. Now on the couple of days, let's see, I guess it was, was it Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday? So three days they had liturgy with communion, which since I'm just a catechumen, I don't receive communion yet. Um, the people who do, which was everybody in my group, but me, they can't have coffee or water or anything. They have to be on a strict fast until they receive communion and then they can eat or drink water. So on those days, I still came down and made coffee for myself because I'm like, 
I'm not fasting, you know, I'm not receiving communion. So um, I used to early on, like last year or the beginning of this year, I was trying to do, um, I guess it would have been the beginning of this year, January. I was trying to uh, fast with everybody at church because I, when I found out that they don't eat anything from midnight um, until they take communion, which is like around 11 o'clock in the morning, I was trying to do that. And then someone told me, oh, don't do it until you have to. Because I was like, okay, good. Because like, I was having a hard time not having water at least um, when I wake up. But yeah, so I, I'll just wait until I have to. But so I was down there by myself. That's the coffee maker and the fridge. Let's see. That's me at about 4.45 in the morning. Yeah, with my, my full head covering on. Let's see. Oh, and this is just right outside the main church. I was sitting on a bench here. I was waiting to go see a priest who lives there because everyone told me it'd be a good idea just to go talk to him and say hello, introduce myself. So I did. Uh, and this is the kitchen again. A uh, little microwave. I think I showed this picture already. Let's see couldn't get enough pictures of that main church. It just looks so beautiful from, from so many different angles. A little place to sit by the chapel uh, of Anastasia. Yeah, it's over there too. And these are some icons in the chapel um, that's uh, dedicated to Anastasia. Another picture of her icon. And I think, yes, see this little circle here down at the bottom? That, I believe, uh, is that sh they have some of her relics in there. Very small. So I don't know what kind of relics are in there of her, but that's normally what that is. So Jesus icon. More pictures of the ground. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> I was sitting down and just took a picture of my long skirt just to show, like, I have to be covered up all the way down to my shoes, and my long skirt, and there's from head to toe, so there's, I didn't have any, I was out there by myself during the day, um, I didn't have anyone to take, like, a full-length picture of me, so I took a head shot there, see, I'm completely covered there, and I'm completely covered there, so, but it was fine, Not, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, this is more in the bookstore. Okay, so this is an interesting story. So let's see, I think I got, yeah. So so here's some of the icons. Uh, I got I got these, uh, one of these here and and this one, but so this is, this is an, uh, let's see, an icon of, of a different Anastasia. Um, because on my birthday, there's a, there's a Saint Anastasia that's venerated. So I'm considering her for my patron saint. But this, this icon kept standing out to me. And I couldn't figure out who it was. Um, and I asked, because it's not written on the back. And I think this is written in Greek. Or I don't know what. I think that's Greek. Um, but it doesn't say on the back who she is. And it's interesting looking. And, you know, her hand's covered there. And I noticed that. And her, her head covering's a little different than that what you normally see. And I asked the sister who was working in the store. She didn't know either. And she was trying to figure it out. And I was just going to put it back. But I was like, this 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 one keeps calling to me. So I want to know who it is. And so I went ahead and bought it. And then um, I took it back to my dorm. And I was talking to the other girls in my room. And we were, like, trying to figure out who it was. Um, and I finally got the bright idea to just, you know, because it had on the back, it had where it was made. So I just went on, I found their website and I went on there to look her up. Well, the interesting thing is um, we had been talking, me and some other uh, guests um, that, that I was with, um, we were talking about uh, patron saints and various things. And, and I was like, well, I, was, I wonder if there's like a patron saint of cooks or bakers or something. And, and. We, uh, she told me about this male saint, um, how you say it, uh, let's see, e Ephrosino, okay, Ephrosinos or Ephrosino, she could, she pronounced it, you froze a nose, <laughs> like you froze your nose, uh, but it's, it's it, like, it's Ephrosinos or something like that, um, Ephrosinos, um, in any event, 
uh, you know, he's like the patron saint of cooks and there's a whole story that goes along with him. And I was like, oh, I wonder if there's a female um, cook, you know, patron saint of cooks or or what his what his like feminized name would be. Um, Because sometimes, you know, you don't have to take a saint that was your gender. You can take like an opposite gender saint, but just like feminize or masculinize their name and um, then go by by that name. So anyways, I looked her up on the web, this this saint here, I looked her up on the website uh, where this this was made. And turns out, right next to her, right next to her is Saint Euphrosinos or (laughs) Ephrosinos. Okay, and her name is the feminized version of his name. It was um, Ephrosine, I believe. Spelled the same way, except for without the os on the end, it was like N N E. So it was Ephrosine of Alexandria. So it's exactly his name, but feminized. But she was not a cook. She has an interesting story um, where she, uh, I guess her her she had dedicated her life to Christ. And she came from a rich, uh, she had a rich father. I think her mother died when she was young, but she had a rich father who wanted to marry her off when she was 18. She didn't want to get married because she wanted to serve God. So she ran away to a monastery, but she didn't run to a female monastery because she was afraid her dad would find her there. So she ran away to a male monastery, disguised herself, said she was a eunuch, changed her name to something I don't remember right now, um, and lived as, a monk in a male monastery and I guess there were times when her father who had been distraught because you know she ran away would go to this monastery and speak with the monks and you know get counsel and apparently a couple times went and saw her but did not recognize his daughter so the story goes and it wasn't until later when she was ill and dying when her father came to visit the monastery that she revealed that it was actually her Ephrosini uh his daughter and you know I, I guess then she died and then he later became a monk and decided to to be at that monastery but so that's the story it's a little bit of a strange story um but yeah she wasn't a cook but I just think it was very interesting that that <laughs> that icon was calling to me when the night before I had been saying I wonder if there's like a female uh, you know version of uh Afrosinos. um and here, here she is. Here's, here's, here's Afrosini. So I don't know that I want to take that name on, um, but the idea would be to, to take uh, the male Afrosinos, but just feminize the name. So he would be my saint, but I would just take the name that sounds more like hers. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oops. Am I going the right direction here? Okay. Another picture of our, this is in our room. So when, you know, I get up out of bed, that's what I'm looking at is our little uh, little icon corner there. And then this is, I think this is my final picture. This is my take home, what I, what I got while I was there at the monastery. So I, it turns out I got, I think it's 11 books and 11 icons. I wasn't counting. I was just picking things up. So got a whole lot of books here, which I think are really good. Uh, got a Christ icon a couple of Mary icons. We've got the Ephrosini down here. Uh, this is the Tsar and his family, new, the new, the new uh, saints, Russian Tsar and his family here. Got St. Luke that we saw in the church. Um, uh, this is um, St. Anastasia. Another St. Anastasia. I think the one here on the right-hand side it said Anastasia the myrrh bearer. So there's some story that she was one of the, that that a particular Anastasia was present uh, when Jesus had risen and wasn't in his tomb. But I can't find a whole lot on her because like when I look up who were the myrrh bearers, she's not mentioned, but she I found a site that said, no, there was an Anastasia there. So she's a different one from this one uh Anastasia um the Roman who was ven- who was venerated on my or commemorated on my birthday. So yeah, it's a little bit weird. So I've got a couple Anastasias here and then this icon is the icon of when Christ turned the water uh oh no, that's this wait. That's this one here. This is the icon when Christ turned water into wine. 
I guess that's the wedding at Cana, I think it is. And then this is another uh, icon that has a Mary's whole story here. And then this, this I believe is uh, St. Anna. So it's the birth of Mary. Because I am considering St. Anna as well. And here are some candles that they made at the monastery. Here is some myrrh resin that you burn uh, in a censer. And then here is some um, uh, bread. It's called, um, I can never say it right, Itidoron, I think it's called. <laughs> I never pronounce it right. Um, this was bread that was, that, that was um, blessed um, at the consecration of the monastery, I believe. So, um, yeah, so this is my haul that I managed to fit in my suitcase, my small suitcase. And it all survived. Nothing got broken, so that's good. I think that is the, yeah, that's the end of my trip. So, anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I have to go back there. And next time, when I do go back, I'll be able to stand in the main part of the church because I will have been baptized and uh, be officially Orthodox. So thank you for watching.